Trip is on the cord. All right. Yeah, sometimes things don't always go as planned, but that's all right. Uh, what's so cool, I don't, some of you guys, like, might miss the fact that we don't have people standing behind me on the stage playing instruments and stuff. Uh, but I, I learned this when I was, at, I went to North Central and went to school there, and we have every single, almost every day of the week, there would be, like, a different style of worship, and they have different worship teams and different, even, like, they'd be, I don't know, like, even, like, worship teams that were, like, um, styles, like, other, from, like, other countries and stuff, like, at different points throughout the year, and obviously, I, I grew up in Mora, and I'm, I'm kind of used to one thing, and we all, we all get kind of used to kind of the style of worship or the style of music that we are into and that we like, and one thing that I learned while I was there, um, and today just kind of reminded me of that, uh, it's just fun looking around and seeing people still worshiping when we just have music and like a video on the screen. And that just shows where our hearts are at and that our desire is to worship God and it's not about anything else. It's not about having really good musicians on stage or anything. <laughs> Though that's really fun and I hope we get to experience that more often in the future here. But um, in this season or even just this week, just having words on the screen and just being able to see us worship and that desire within us just to um, only be singing to God and not caring about any of the other circumstances in worship is really cool. Um, that's just uh, something that I felt like sharing. Um, yeah, because it's, sometimes it's different every week, so it's just kind of, it's kind of cool. Uh, anyway, so another cool thing about, about church and having the uh, a chance to meet together each week is the fact that we just heard Tyler share as we started the service and we're about to hear uh, Steve share a little bit and we're all kind of sharing little glimpses on one verse out of the Bible. I'm talking about the same verse that Steve's going to preach on in just a couple minutes and Tyler opened up talking about it and it's, it's one verse in Matthew and I'll read it. I walked in a little late, I don't know if you read it, but I'll read it one more time. Uh... It's Matthew 13, verse 33. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. So this is a, a little parable that's kind of almost in the shadow of one that we talk about all the time, the parable of the mustard seed. And we talk about how little the mustard seed is and how, how much God can do with just a little mustard seed. But what's so cool about this story, and yeast obviously is a very small component that does pretty crazy things when you cook with it. Um, but one thing, and I don't want to talk too long because I don't want to share things or dig into stuff that Steve might be talking about, but I, it's crazy how much the Bible can, there's just so much in it, and there's so much, and the fact that we're all talking about one verse out of the Bible, and there's a whole whole lot more than just one verse in this Bible. Uh, and I just, I, Steve told me just to share a little bit, and I'm just like, okay, one verse, that sounds pretty simple. And the more I was diving into it and I started reading commentaries and stuff, it's crazy how much there is and how much, like, uh, just, like, history and how much cultural things from the time of Jesus all play into this one little verse. And what's so cool about it, I'm going to have some notes on my phone here. If I don't stick to the notes, I'll, who knows what will happen. So. Um, the crazy thing about this is the parable uh, is talking about, like, leaven. We've heard about unleavened bread. We have the, um, there's, there's, the Bible talks about um, yeast and leaven and unleavened bread quite a bit. And every single time it's mentioned in the Bible, except for this one particular case, it's a negative thing. And it's, it's something that, like, the Israelites were supposed to, like, abstain and be, like, have nothing to do with leaven and yeast in there. And, the, and there's, there's reason for that. And it's, there's fermentation. And sometimes they would take a little bit of leftover dough from a previous, um, whatever, batch that they were making. And they'd use it in the next one. And that's what they would use to, to raise the, like, there was a little bit of yeast and stuff in there. And that's what would raise the next the next loaf of bread. But the thing with that is the, the yeast had 
um, and the leaven, whatever, it's kind of the same thing. It, it had fermented and it had become not what it was and it would change the flavor and all these different things. But what's so cool about this is, and there's a little bit of debate that Jesus might have been still to a degree talking about a potentially negative um, aspect about the church and how false teachings can come in and how different things can, um, uh, there, there's so much cultural stuff going on at the time, but um, also there's this, I don't know, this cool thing about yeast, I, and Tyler kind of was getting into it and the kneading and all this stuff, but the cool thing about yeast is it's, you don't even know it's there. It's such a small ingredient. You can't see it when it's mixed into everything. And it does, you have to wait to see what's happening. You have to sit there and, like, you don't even want to sit and watch. It's like watching grass grow. Like, some of our yards, I feel like they're, you could probably watch them grow. They're growing really fast right now. But when you're watching a loaf of bread just sit in the pan, just wait, and you're watching it rise, like, it's going to be a boring thing to watch. But... You come back and you leave it there for, I don't cook, so I don't know. It's probably different for everything you bake. But the amount of time that you leave it there and then you come back and you're going to see yeah. major changes yeah. in what you had left there. And what's so cool about this um, is, yeah, yeast works secretly and silently. But when it's done, you can't deny the effect it had on the bread. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so recently, I, I mean, we've probably all heard stories uh, kind of like this. I I love, um, it's cool, um, I don't know the story really behind the song, I Exalt Thee, but I just love old hymns, and some of you, I'm sure, um, kind of miss singing hymns and just love old hymns, but I love just researching and just diving into the stories behind old hymns, and there's, every hymn has just, almost all of them have just insane stories of how they were written, and this just reminds me, this isn't a story about um, him necessarily, but it reminds me of some, so that's why I brought that up. But um, th I heard a story recently of a missionary that, I think it was like l late 1800s, early 1900s. He was, I think, in the Congo. He was somewhere in Africa, and he, he had been there. He was doing his thing, and he just wasn't, nothing yes. really was going good. Some of you have probably heard this story, yes. but he... Um, he had, after several years, things were not going so great, and he got into some disagreements with some of the people in this country, and he just goes home. And it, it literally says that, like, he was, he just felt like he was a failure as a missionary, and he, I think he died, like, eight or ten years after coming home, and, um, that's the end of the story, 19, like, 12 or something. And then, like, 80 years later or something, a few missionaries feel called to this area, and they go, and they're, they're doing all kinds of research of the area, and they're expecting nothing to be different. Um, they, they're expecting, like, a lot of work. And they didn't know anything about this guy, but they're just, like, they researching the country, and they're like, we need to go there. And this is, like, they're just, like, had all these anticipations of what it was going to be like and how to reach these people. And they get there, and they're blown away by the fact that there's thriving churches, and there's, like, it's just crazy. Like, the whole, the whole area was, like, just saved people. And there's more details to the story, but it's just so cool because this guy sadly never got to see. I'm sure after the fact he found out, which is the exciting part about going to heaven and yeah. seeing the impact that we have had that we never got to know while we were here, which is kind of the hard thing to wait for sometimes because sometimes we feel like our lives aren't, amounting to much sometimes but the cool thing about this story is yeah the fact that uh he had like i guess like sharing and telling the story of jesus and just doing his thing and look what came of it and like yeast and bread the the bread will never be the same again it's completely transformed i've I get in the bad habit of sharing the same th stories over and over again, and in youth group, the I, I've already said this a few times from here, but like I, I've shared the stories of Jesus walking on water, um, and they're just so sick of hearing it, um, but it's so cool, 
but I also have been sharing the story of Zacchaeus a lot, and I've shared it with you guys. And what's so cool about that story is the same thing that Jesus, Zacchaeus has a chance to just be with Jesus and have an encounter and just a meeting with Jesus. It says nothing about what they talked about, but it talks, it, it just follows that story by saying he went and righted all his wrongs and changed his ways, and he was completely different from that moment forward. And what's I, I don't know. Steve could be going a completely different way with this, and that's totally fine. And it's so cool that we have a chance to come together, and that's what the church is all about. We can be diving into the, these stories, and as a, that's, that's why we meet together, because we can, like, it's a bigger picture when we all come together. We can read the Bible, and then you can talk to other people, and it, it all makes more sense and God reveals himself to all of us in different ways and when we come together that's when we really get to see the whole story unfold and that's what's so cool about this so um I guess I can stop talking pretty soon here but um we I don't know I just that's just so cool to me um but we also see and that's like every other story of leaven in the bible we see the opposite and we see the fact that um we have Sometimes we have sins and things that we never gave up, things that we never um, gave to God, and things that we, uh, I don't know, just things that we still have and deal with in our lives that if aren't dealt with, they're going to bring us to ruin, and they're going to bring corruption, and they could even hurt the body and hurt the church as a whole. And and that's that's the other point of leaven in the Bible, the fact that... Um, just a little bit of something bad, if not dealt with and if not um, uh, corrected, it can ruin the whole loaf of bread, and it can ruin the taste, and it can ruin what it's meant for, and you can't use it for its intended purpose. So um, with that, it's kind of a broad thing to leave it at, and I'm excited to hear uh, just how Steve unpacks these verses in maybe a, a different way yet. But um, I just want to pray... Um, just over those two things and the fact that it's it's guaranteed that we have people in both camps in this room. And so let's just pray for a second. God, I just thank you so much for this morning and this chance to be together and the chance to rub shoulders with different people with different stories and just to, to hear the things that you've done in each and every one of our lives. And God, I just pray for both sides of this story and just the fact that how, how cool it is that how much we can get out of one verse out of the Bible. God, I just pray for people that maybe are still struggling with things or are not haven't been willing to uh, share things and deal with things. God, I just pray that you just work on their hearts, God, and that you do something in their lives, God, so that they finally get to that point where they can find that freedom that they've been sitting in the back just hoping to experience but never really knew what they needed to do to get there. And God, I just pray also for some of us that might be feeling like almost like a disappointment or like the things that we've done for you just haven't really amounted to anything. God, I just pray that you even just give us a glimpse of some of the uh, things that you have done through us that we might not have been aware of. Um, have people call us, give us uh, just encounters with people and hear stories that maybe happened years earlier. And God, I just pray for the, the future and the things that are going to happen through the people in this room, God, as we seek after you and that um, as we just follow and listen to the things that you want us to do. God, I just uh, lift up this morning, um, and I also uh, pray for the offering. I pray that uh, you bless it and that you, uh, yeah, that you multiply it and use it and help us reach the city with it. In Jesus' name, amen. So, we can get a couple people to help with the offering. Um, just, uh, um, I have one announcement, I think. Um, also, just check out your bulletin because there's a ton of stuff. Uh, I know one big one is we definitely need help uh, mowing the lawn. Uh, we're all busy people, but it's necessary if we want this place to look decent. Uh, <laughs> takes a little while, but if we have a couple people helping with that, it's... Uh, it really doesn't take very long. Um, anyway, so just uh, consider that. Um, 
Also, Steve said there's no prayer at his house this week. Uh, they're, I think they're out of town, so don't show up. I mean, you can pray on your own. You can pray on his front door, but he's not going to be there. So uh, just be aware of that and join them again next week. Uh, I think that's it. So you guys can uh, hand out the offering, and we'll uh, move on with the service. Thank you, Mark. Man, I get that's an awesome introduction. Our kids are dismissed to Kids Church. They are fired up. They are also learning about the yeast today as they're doing that. Um, Mark made a notion that we're not having prayer this week because we're going to be, we were blessed to be able to go out to Wisconsin Dells for a few days. So looking forward to enjoying summer with our family, just like a lot of other families in our church are. Schools out, graduation parties. I'm sure a lot of you have been making the trips around to, to see the graduates. We've had a lot of them in our church, and a lot of the parties are happening. And I'm just so proud of our young people at Living Hope Church and what God has in store for them for their next season. What an incredible introduction. Um, I did not tell Mark or Tyler to share what they shared. It was all Holy Spirit. And um, I'm just here to kind of wrap up the things that they shared. If you got your Bibles, we've been, uh, it's been quoted in both uh, two times in the Bible. Jesus talks about the parable 11. It's in, uh, today we're going to be at Mark 13, 33. As you're turning there, just be aware that in, the Mar in Mark, in, in Ma I mean Matthew chapter 13, 33, that in the chapter of Matthew, there's a whole lot of other parables. If I was to summarize it this way, Jesus is sharing these parables. They deal with two topics. The parables of growth, parables of judgment, and they're all intertwined. They're all intertwined there. As, as Jesus is unpacking this, he's, he's sharing story after story. And um, the parable of the mustard seed and the parable of the yeast is, is right in the middle between uh, the parables talking about growth and talking about judgment. And so Jesus is sharing parables, like it says even in the bottom of Matthew 13, uh, 34, Jesus is explaining that he spoke in parables. At the beginning of Matthew's Gospel in 13, Jesus is on a lake. He's in a boat. So Jesus is enjoying summer. And while he's enjoying his summer, he's beginning to teach in parables. So Jesus spoke in parables. There are stories of, of how to do life in the kingdom, stories of how Jesus wants to activate your life and activate your faith. And here's the, I want to challenge you. As you're reading the parables, I want you to read them with the New Testament mindset. Because at this time, Jesus was not yet glorified as he's sharing these parables. He now is glorified. He has risen from the dead. And the Holy Spirit has been poured out. Even today on Pentecost Sunday, we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And just look at these parables with the revelation of who Jesus is. Jesus was trying to explain himself to his followers and explain himself to the people in the crowds. And, and a lot of times when he spoke in parables, they were like mysteries to their ears. He even said, you have eyes to see, but you don't see. You have ears, but you do not hear. Your heart is hardened. So, so the people that he is trying to reach with these stories, their hearts are hardened. They're, they're not seeing with their eyes. They're not hearing with their ears. But because as the, as, if we're in the room today and you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, I've got good news for you. You could see what they didn't see, and you could hear what they did not hear, and you could know what they miss. And, and, and so read these parables and when you look at this one verse, this is the shortest parable Jesus taught was this one verse, the parable of the leaven, but it packs an amazing punch. And see, this parable is the shortest peril, parable, and I came up with a big idea today. Here's the big idea. Here's kind of the big wrap-up. If you were to summarize, what is this parable, what's the point of this parable that Jesus taught us? It's this, the smallest and insignificant things make the biggest impact. Whether it's a small seed or yeast, small things planted or hidden take time to grow, but with time they produce fruit, and their influence grows to bring change to the masses. Everyone say influence. That is the purpose of yeast. Yeast influences the bread, just like we are supposed to influence the world around us. We are all hidden. We are all equipped and powered by God, planted to go certain places to do what? To be the yeast in the place where God has planted us to do what? To influence the area where he's put us. And it may not be instant, but it may take time. And Mark just shared that part of, I was going to share that story of that missionary as well. It's amazing that a guy left the mission field feeling he utterly failed, but 
But when he passed away in heaven, there is fruit that remains. You know what? We talked about heaven. We talked about eternity last fall and part of winter. And the Bible says he will wipe every tear from our eyes. I believe there's two, there's two sides to that coin. The first side is, I think, when we stand before God one day, and when we as believers have to get account of our life, we're all arrested by Romans 3.23. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. And when we stand before God someday, we, we're going to weep because we're going to possibly be reminded where we fell short with our life, our gifts, our talents, and our abilities. We're going to weep there. Jesus is going to wipe those tears from our eyes. But here's another angle to the judgment seat of Christ. It's exactly what Mark shared in that story. We're also going to weep at the judgment seat of Christ because we're going to stand before Jesus thinking that we failed him. We're going to believe that what we did didn't matter. And, 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 and because we compare ourselves to others, we're going to stand before Jesus thinking, well, I didn't do as good as that guy did. And Jesus is going to say, let me show you where you planted seed. Let me show you the person. So I believe when we stand before the Lord, we're going to weep with joy, joyful tears because where we thought we failed, God is going to show us where we succeeded. And it may take eternity to see the reward of that. And so this, that's the big idea is that this yeast is an influencing factor in the bread and in the dough, just like Jesus wants us to be an influencing factor in the world we live. Mark touched on it great. Yeast is referred to as both good and bad in the Bible. And it's interesting because as we read this, it says here the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman, that a woman took. Take notice, a woman mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked through all the dough. Let me focus on the bad part. See, the Pharisees, you know, and Jesus taking a positive spin on yeast was kind of countercultural. So it's really powerful that Jesus emphasized the powerful, uh, the good side of yeast rather than the negative that was the kind of the predominant teaching of Jesus' day. Jesus decided to throw a curveball to his audience with that because people were expecting to focus on all the negative stuff regarding yeast. But yeast is referred to in the Bible as bad. And even, when, even after the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus was trying to explain something to them, but the, the disciples were so hung up on the bread that they forgot to get that Jesus was saying, hey, by the way, you need to watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees at Herod. And it was like it went right over the disciples' heads. They're like, didn't you get bread? Did you get? I mean, it's kind of a funny thing. Jesus is trying to have a very powerful conversation with his disciples, and the disciples are worrying about the bread. They're worried. And Jesus is like, oh, man, I'm trying to get something to you guys, and you guys aren't getting it. So it's kind of an ironic and funny story there. But, but Jesus did make it clear, watch out for the yeast of, of Herod and the Pharisees. What does that mean? Is Herod is their political spirit. Pharisees is religious spirit. What Jesus is trying to get at there is, look, guys, I'm trying to tell you, make sure that my influence is greater than that of Herod and the Pharisees in your life. Guys, make sure that you're more influenced by me and by what I am saying and doing than of the world that surrounds you. Be aware of that. Be aware of the yeast of, of, of Herod and the Pharisees. It's a reminder to us that Jesus wants to be the influence in your life, not the world. He wants to be the one that's Lord of your life. He wants to be the yeast that brings the influence and the change. He wants, doesn't, he doesn't, he in fact, if you allow Jesus into your life and allow the hidden work of the Holy Spirit to take root in your life, it will remove the bad influence out of your life. It will remove that bad yeast that Jesus is referring to. Paul even refers to that in 1 Corinthians 5, 6 to 13. He's basically saying that we need to get rid of that stuff. We need to make sure that if there's any of that bad yeast within our system, it needs to be, it needs to get rid of. And, and, and like Mark was saying, the common practice of the, of the Jewish people that day, even especially before Passover, was to remove all the leaven out of their house. It was like a prophetic act of, of the house being cleansed. And, and, then if, and it was like as they're cleaning the inside of their house and removing the leaven, it's a prophetic picture of what they believe God is going to do within their hearts as they're cleaning their house on the inside. They're prophetically declaring, God, do what you're doing in this house, in my heart, and in my life. So the bad yeast is removed. But the good news is, is that if we, what Jesus is getting at, that if we allow his influence in our lives, and you allow his influence to grow deep within you, what, what, what will that do? It changes the character. Like yeast changes the character.
So you don't have to worry or fret over the bad yeast because if you just give Jesus access, he will begin to bring the transformation to your life that you've always wanted. But Jesus was making it clear, make sure you're influenced by me more than by Herod, more than by Pharisees. Because that's also tied, when Jesus was referring to watch out for this bad leaven, he was referring to hypocrisy. He was referring to sinfulness and bad teaching, but hypocrisy. I find it interesting that, that, that um, Matthew made a point to add 60 pounds. 60 pounds. 60 pounds. What does that mean? Well, you know, 60 is the number for pride, by the way. So could it be that that lump of mass represents pride? And when you let the influence of Jesus in, because you know what? Pride is what took Satan out of heaven onto earth. And all of us, if we're walking in pride and sinfulness, guess what? Did Jesus say, look, if you give me access into that lump, I will remove your pride. <laughs> I'll remove pride out of your heart. I'll remove pride out of your mind. So I find it interesting that, they, that the writer made a, a point to add, put 60 in there. And it's this picture of us that God wants to remove the pride. He, and pri what's pride? Pride is the root of all sin. Man, if we can pull that root out, it, a whole lot could be harvested out of our lives that's bad. And so let Jesus have influence in your life. And this is what Paul focuses on. You know, he even says that in, in referring to the bad yeast, but in Galatians 5, 9, he says a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. What does that mean? Because like Jesus, he's focusing on the good. Like Mark was saying before, I mean, yeast is a powerful agent. It works silently. It influences, it transforms the character of the dough. Yeast works when it's hidden, and it's inside of the dough. It causes the dough to rise. It works very fast and speedily. And when it works, it makes the quality of the dough better, and it makes it taste good. But yeast starts as a hidden work, and it later becomes visible. It just simply takes time. That, that's what yeast is. And Paul is saying that in Galatians 5, 9, a little yeast works the whole batch of dough. But what about the woman who's mixing it? That's an interesting word in the, in the Greek. It really means th that word to mix, what she's doing and mixing it, kneading, is really mean to conceal or to hide. To conceal or to hide. So the, and I look at it because when Jesus is teaching parables, he's using everyday examples. And he's, and he's using everyday people to explain these parables. So the woman for him to use a woman in his parable is very, very interesting because at that day, like children, women were insignificant in the culture. And Jesus is highlighting the woman that's, that's mixing or concealing the yeast and the dough. It's kind of like saying, look, God uses the most insignificant things to make the biggest impact. God will use the most insignificant thing, yeast. He'll use the most insignificant person, a woman, to bring sometimes the biggest impact in your life. Look back at your life right now. Who are the people that have touched you the most? It's probably people, according to the world's eyes, are very insignificant, but yet they had a huge influence in your life. They were the, God brought, like this woman is bringing, is, is operating with this yeast to make the dough better. God brings people into your lives to make you better, and sometimes he uses the most insignificant people to make the biggest impact in your life. And the ones that people we remember the most are the ones who made the biggest impact, and a lot of them are probably not going to be on the TV or the movies or anything else. They're just the simple, everyday people that you bump into, and they make a difference in your life. That's very significant that the woman's role here of mixing and concealing, it reminds us that God, God works through the least of these to bring the change that we need. Also, too, the, the woman is also a picture of the work of the Holy Spirit. That the, that the woman is a, is a picture of how the Holy Spirit begins to, to conceal his, his word into our hearts, to hide the word of God into our hearts. And that the woman's role in this parable is also the role of the Holy Spirit in your life. And today is Pentecost Sunday, and it's a day where the Holy Spirit fell in Acts chapter 1 and 2. And, and may, we, may we all partner with the work of the Spirit in our life to to hide God's word into our heart, that, to hide his word into our heart, that we may not sin against him. It's like the yeast of, of, of the word of God being planted in us, but the word, the Holy Spirit does a work, does a work. And so the woman mixing and kneading and concealing the yeast within the dough, it's like it's a picture of how the Holy Spirit wants to operate. And and the Holy Spirit works within us to become more like Christ. The Holy Spirit works within us to equip us to fulfill God's purpose. Here's another thought about the leavened dough. When the dough is leavened, what happens? 
the leavened dough is prepared for the oven. I've got good news for you, though, is that, that in order to make bread, it has to be baked. And the leavened bread is being prepared for one place called an oven. And it's in that place that makes us bread fit for the master's table. That when you allow the work of the Spirit in your life, there comes a point to where you have to be tried. You have to be tested. And the, the leavening process here is also a picture of God preparing us for the oven of our life, the trials that you'll be facing. And when you're leavened, and when, when, you have, when you've surrendered to the work of the Holy Spirit, when you surrender to the work of transformation, like last week we talked about the barren fig tree, that, that in order to produce fruit we need Jesus to dig around it, and we need to allow him to fertilize us. We need to, allow, we need to be obedient to the work that he wants to do in our life. And this parable is another, another illustration of how God wants to work, that, that when he is the primary influence of your life, when you're allowing the change to take place, you will be prepared for the oven of life. And when you get placed in that trial, when you get placed in that hard situation because you've allowed the influence of Jesus to override everything else in your life, guess what? I've got good news for you. You will survive. And you will be the bread of life to the world. This world that we serve is hungry. They are hungry. They are hungry for something real. And when you submit to the leavening process of the work of the Lord in your life, when God places you into the oven called the world, you will be fresh, smelling, delicious bread that the world is hungry for. And when they encounter you, they're going to encounter him, the bread of life. It's powerful. That's so powerful that, that God wants us to be prepared to handle the oven and the fiery trials of life. But that only comes if we're willing to surrender to the process of allowing him to influence our lives and the work of the Spirit that he wants to do in us and through us. As we, wrap this, as we wrap this baby up, let's look at this parable through the lens of the New Testament. Let's, let's picture that we're in that crowd, but now we got the revelation because we've been redeemed. We have the work of the cross. The Holy Spirit's been poured out. Here's another meaning of this parable is this, and Mark touched on this a little bit, so did Tyler. Jesus is the yeast that was hidden and concealed inside a woman and whirled for a time in a season. Then as Jesus began to grow, his influence grew to the point to where he is bringing transformation to the world then and now. That's the, that's the New Testament meaning of this parable is that we have to remind that Jesus is the yeast. And when God sent his son, had a plan to send his son of the world, he needed to plant him like yeast. He needed to conceal him. Why was he born in Bethlehem? House of bread. It was Jesus. It was the seed. Going back to the Old Testament, he was also the yeast that was concealed in Bethlehem. And, and then he kind of goes off the grid until we read in Luke 2 that he's at the temple courts learning and listening from the teachers of his day. And then he goes off the grid again, and then we read that we pick it up that he's 30 years old and he's starting his ministry. So we see little glimpses of the yeast growing. We see glimpses of Jesus' influence beginning to grow. And when God set him to the scene when he was an adult, things began to merge and grow. And his, I mean, by the time the yeast was, was starting to take effect, it took effect on 12 disciples. Then it started to take effect in his ministry. And, and when he passed away and he got laid into the tomb and he rose from the dead, the work of the Holy Spirit is still carrying on the work. The, Jesus' influence it hasn't died. It's still growing. It's still growing. And it's, still, and it's going to continue to grow until it wraps it all up with the rapture. You know, that's good news that, that he is still working and transforming. When we look at this parable, it's that the kingdom works the kingdom works from and, and comes out of small beginnings. Let's not despise or be discouraged by it. You may be like in a season right now, like, man, I'm not sure if God's doing anything. I've got good news for you. If you're, if you're surrendering yourself to the work of the Spirit and you're allowing Jesus to influence your life, just let the yeast do its work. There will be time when you'll see fruit. So don't despise or be discouraged by small beginnings. 
because the kingdom works from a small beginning. The kingdom works from a small mustard seed. It grows from that. And the earlier parable talked about the seed grew to be a tree where birds were, were, were taking its shade and picking the fruit off of it. It takes time. Also, this parable reminds us today what matter, what, what's inside matters to God more than on the outside. What is inside of you matters more to God than what's on the outside. That's going back to the leaven of the Pharisees at Herod. It's the hypocrisy. Jesus confronted the Pharisees. like, look, I, the Father is more concerned what's going on the inside of that heart of yours than on the outside. You guys are just a bunch of whitewashed tombs. But on the inside, you're like dead man's bones. This parable reminds us that Jesus is more concerned on the inside of your life than he is on the outside. And if you allow the transformation to work on the inside, like he said, it will transform your character on the outside, and then the world will be impacted by your influence. It's a reminder to this parable, also a reminder that we need to make Jesus a part of everything we do in our life. That, that if we make Jesus priority, we, place, we, we surrender to his work, that, that he brings transformation to everything we do. And, and when we allow him to be the yeast that's hidden within our hearts, his influence begins to transform us into the person that he's called us to be. And then through the, even through last week, through, this, through the act of repentance, we could, come, we could get rid of that bad yeast that's trying to influ, uh, influence our lives. And if we repent of those things and we give room for the work of the Holy Spirit in us, it begins to transform us. When we allow the Holy Spirit to mix us and to conceal his presence, more of his word and more of his power within us, we'll begin to see the, how the quality of our life will begin to change. We don't want to, also we, this parable shows us that we don't want to despise the small things in God's kingdom. Just like the woman, we, God uses insignificant people. God uses insignificant things to bring about a beautiful transformation. So when we're in the process, let's not despise those small things. Let's not despise the places where God puts us because it could be the very place where God's going to send you something very powerful and significant to your life. But if we despise that and, and, and we just shun it and we reject it, we're, we may be missing out on something very beautiful. So this parable reminds us that we don't want to despise the small things in God's kingdom. But ultimately, this is the, the big idea for me and, and my prayer as I've been praying for our church through this parable, this is this final point, this final thought regarding the parable 11 is because of what Jesus did for us, we are the yeast in the world to bring influence and change. That we are the, that we are the leavening agents that God has placed in this world. That my prayer for us is that we would be the influencers in this community, that all of us in this room is like yeast. And God has put you in a place. God has put you in situations to be the yeast. And he's put you there to be an influencer, to be a change agent. As you're surrendering yourself, which is a process all, all the way till we go to heaven, the sanctification process, but as we're continuing to surrender to the work of Jesus in us, and through us, we become the yeast into the world around us. And that's my prayer for you, is that you would be influencers. That our church, you know, people may look at our church and say, man, you're just a small church in more of Minnesota. And, 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 but you know what? God is using this church to impact the nations. He's using this church in the, to impact the world. I, as I was praying with this couple this week, she didn't know I was preaching on leaven, but she said, you know, they go to one of our larger churches in the assemblies. And, but she said, I find it ironic that it's not the, the pastor of our church sitting in our living room. It's you. And I thought, wow, she didn't even know I was preaching on leaven this week. But that's what God does. God uses the small things to bring change and make big impact. And, and we don't want to despise what God is doing. We don't. We, we just want to stay faithful to what he's doing, and he allows us to be the impact. And, you know, we planted some leaven this week in our community. You know, every, when the schools close out, I like to bless the principals of, of Ogilvy and Mora. And so 
you know, I presented them each with a little card and a gift card. The good news was all of them were out of their office, so I literally hid something there. And, and just, you know, it's just those little things. You know, little, it's, not about the, it's, it's not about the amount, but it's the little, the little touches we do. It's like yeast being, it's like, I feel like, man, leaven is going in to the community. And it's a matter of time that we'll see the fruit. You know, when we give an offer, I mean, there's so many applications to what leaven can do. When we just ob- obey the process and trust that God's going to do what he said he would do, we're, we're going to see the change and the influence. And that's been my prayer. I love this church. I love you guys. I love th- how God is working in you guys. And having lunch with another new family from our church this week, it's, I'm just, my jaw just dropped to the table as I heard their testimony. I'm like, whoa, and how God moved them from here. I mean, they had a, they, they're from Michigan, and the Lord said, or the Lord told this pastor, and he said, well, what church do I go to when I move? And he says, well, I heard about this one here, Living Hope. And I'm like, what? Like, all the way in Michigan, and I, and I don't even know the guy. I don't even know the church. I don't even think the church is assemblies either. It's just like the pastor told this family, you need to go to Living Hope Church and more. That, that's, that's what he was told, and they obeyed. And, and so just hearing those stories that God is doing something. And he wants to do something in you and through you as well. So, Father, this morning, we want to thank you. As we're in this series, Parables, God, we know that this is is an incredible summer to to dive deep into your story. To dive deep into some of those stories that you told your followers and what you told the crowds. But, Lord, thank you that, that through the work of the cross and through your Holy Spirit, now we we could get the greater revelation and meaning of what you were trying to say then. And, and Father, as we look at these parables through the work that you've already accomplished, it, it, just, brings, it just makes my heart sing, and it, it just allows the good news to be even gooder because of what you've did and what you've done and, and what you were trying to share and reveal when you were alive. Many, some got it and caught it, and a lot of them missed it. But, Lord, today it's so beautiful that us that we could go back to your word and, and, and get what they missed. So, Lord, today, I just believe and declare in this season, Father, forgive us if we've despised the small things or the small beginnings today. Lord, forgive us if we have looked at small times or small seasons as insignificant. Forgive us for that thinking. Today, you reminded us in this parable that you work through small beginnings and small things, and you work through the least of these, and, and those those that the world may see as insignificant, you see as significant. God, may we not despise that. So, Lord, if we have, or if anyone in this room has, forgive them in Jesus' name. We repent of that. We repent of that. From this day forward, help us to see the small things as yeast that's starting to grow and expand. God, may we see that. We see that for this church. We see that for the city of Mora, that, that as your presence increases in our lives and the more that you increase in us and the less of the world is in us, then the world around us will see who you really are. And Lord, I just believe in declaring this season, continue to, to plant everyone in this church and our community to be like yeast. I just prophesy that we'll be yeast to this community. We'll be yeast to this city. We'll be yeast to our neighborhoods that, that yes, we're small and we're going to be hidden and concealed, but we just believe that it's a matter of time when we'll see, we'll see our neighbors come to know Jesus, that we'll see people in Mora come to know Jesus, that we'll see more and more salvations, more and more transformations and miracles. Why? Because we're going to surrender to you today and allow you to, be, allow you to do that work so that we could be the yeast in the world around us. Father, I just pray that you raise up, raise the level of influence. Just like yeast rises the dough, may our influence rise in this community. As we're faithful, as we stay true and faithful to what you've called us to do, may, we, may our influence continue to grow, continue to expand, continue to increase. I just prophesy that. I prophesy over business leaders today that, God, you have placed them as yeast in this community. I pray that their influence would continue to expand, that their business is, would expand, that their outreach would expand, that their customer base would expand. Why? Because you have placed them like yeast in this community. And I pray that those that are believers that are in business, God, they are yeast in this community. Community, and as they grow, as they grow and as they're blessed, the spirit of poverty gets broken in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we pray for an increase of our business leaders in this church. 
that they would see themselves as yeast. And as they do those small things, allow those things to grow and expand that would allow their business to grow and expand to eradicate a spirit of poverty in this county in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we need more of that. We need more entrepreneurs and more people with ideas and vision to see what you see and to build what you want to be built. So, Lord, we just pray. Allow those small things to grow into something bigger. And, Lord, we know that it's not by might and it's not by our power, but it's a work of your Holy Spirit. And, Lord, may we all surrender today to the working power of your Spirit. So, Lord, thank you. Thank you. We want to stand thanking you for the influence over these years that this church has had. We thank you for that, Lord. We take none of those things for granted, and we take none of the credit. We thank you that in this season that, Lord, you have done some, some significant, amazing things. Even though the world may look at it and say, well, there's not much going on there, but, Lord, you, but you do know what's going on. And, and we just thank you for that, and we thank you for the heritage and the history that this church has had in this community. We want to say thank you. Thank you for every minister, every pastor, every leader, every person that has walked through these doors that have come to know Christ and has been drawn here by your presence. We bless them and we honor them. And, and Lord, we just thank you for the work that you've done in them and through them today. And God, we just want to be thankful. So, Lord, as we continue on this summer, lead us and guide us. Teach us through your word. May we understand the principles of your kingdom and how your kingdom operates. And, Lord, we want your presence to grow deeper and wider in us. We want more of you. Like John the Baptist says, you must increase and I must decrease. Father, we want you to increase and the world influence to decrease from our lives. Lord, may summer be a season where your influence rises up in our lives. And as your influence rises in us, may our influence expand and grow into the world that needs you and that needs the hope that we have in the good news. So, Lord, we thank you for that today. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. God is so good today. I'm going to turn on some altar music. If, if you're here today and you need prayer, and you need prayer for healing, you need prayer for something, we, um, before you go, I would love to pray with you today as you make your way out. And, you know, blessings to you. And my prayer that you have a safe and a safe uh, summer. Um, you know, one of our families was on vacation, and, man, the, their truck broke down, and they had to buy a new one, man. But, but, they were, but their family was saved. Their family was spared. And, you know, and, um, you know, and I believe so, even in trials and tragedies, God could make a roadblock so that we don't go somewhere he doesn't want us to go. But be safe as you're out there. Enjoy time with family. Blessings to you. Amen and amen. And next.